Hello friends and welcome to today's project of making the classic Eve's pudding. The ingredient list is in the description. Such a simple dessert for any occasion. Make it on the same day and pair it with some fresh, rich homemade custard. Just lovely. Let's begin. First things first, let's talk about the vessel at which I will be using this to bake this in. I'm using a glass container because I like the layers you can see when using a glass container. This container is courtesy of IKEA and here are the dimensions. 20 centimeters for the width, 30 centimeters for the length, and 7 centimeters for the height. Keep that to one side for now. Now let's take care of the raisins. I will be soaking the raisins. So in a bowl with 115 grams of raisins, pour some hot water over it. Give that a stir and let that sit at room temperature. I do this to avoid it from going hard and dry in the oven later on. Next is the most important ingredient. Bramley cooking apples. Very chunky and tart. Such a kick, but nicely paired with raisins and custard later on. They look like rustic apples. What you will have to do is peel them. Then take a cutting board and cut the core out. Cut the apples into four segments and then cut down in half. The smaller the apple, the better you know it will cook in the oven later. If the pieces are too big, by the time the sponge layer is cooked, the apples might not be cooked. Try and also cut the apples in even sizes. Soak the apple pieces in water while you cut the rest of the apples. This prevents it from browning. You can of course use some lemon juice as well. Cut a total of about 6 apples. With some magic and a clap, the rest of the apples are cut. I also drained the water. They came to a total weight of 1150 grams. Next, weigh out 100 grams of vanilla sugar. I have a video on how to make vanilla sugar, where you use the whole vanilla pod so that there is no wastage. A link for that is on the top right corner. Check that out. In another bowl, measure out 50 grams of cornstarch or corn flour. Mix the corn flour with the vanilla sugar. Sprinkle this over the apples. The vanilla sugar is to complement the apples and the cornstarch is to keep the liquid from the apples during the cooking process stable. Otherwise, you will end up with very wet apples. Give that a toss and place all of the apples in your glass container. Make sure it is even and flat, but loose. You can of course go ahead and strain the soaking raisins. They have had enough time. Sprinkle them on top of the apples. Place that to one side for now. Now, we can focus on the sponge mixture. You are basically making a type of Victoria sponge. If you are interested in an alternate Victoria sponge recipe, check out my channel for the Victoria sponge cake. I'll leave the video right here on the top right corner. In a mixing bowl, place 200 grams of butter and use your paddle attachment. Bring it over to the mixer and beat the butter. Beat it until it's soft and fluffy. Next, measure out 100 grams of soft light brown sugar. This will give the sponge some depth in flavor from the sugar. You can use regular white caster sugar, but light brown sugar has that extra layer in flavor. Pour that into the butter. Continue to beat. Beat it until it looks creamy and pale. Next, measure out 4 eggs or about 200 grams. Pour that in two at a time. Continue to beat until it comes together. Once it has come together, pour in the remaining two eggs. Let that go. In the meantime, measure out 200 grams of self-raising flour. If at this point, the butter and eggs are not coming together, just pour in some flour and give that a mix. It will come together. This is just to help it combine. Do not overmix it. Take it off from the mixer now you can sieve the remaining flour over the batter. Fold the mixture with your spatula until there are no more loose flour. Take the mix over and pour it over the apples and raisins. Use 
Use a pellet knife to spread the mixture evenly on the top. Once you have done that, use a wet kitchen towel to clean the top edge of the glass container. This will prevent it from burning on the edge. Just look at that layer. I can't wait. Place it in your oven at 160 degrees for 25 minutes first. After 25 minutes, it looks like it still could use some color. I place it back in the oven again for another 15 and 7 minutes, making it a total of 47 minutes. You know it's ready when you're able to stick a toothpick in and it comes out clean. I wouldn't worry about the crack as you will be cutting it into serving sizes. You could also cover it with some icing sugar. Those apples look soft as well. I bet they're going to melt in my mouth. Get yourself ready with some homemade custard. I have a video on how to make your own. A link is on the top right corner or you can find it on my channel. Just look for Creme Anglaise. After the pudding has settled for about 15 minutes, let's dig into it and enjoy this classic dish. Don't judge me on how I cut my piece. Pour a generous amount of custard. Enjoy it while it's still warm. Such a combination. Just wonderful. Nice hints of vanilla, compliments from the raisin and the light brown sugar used in the sponge. The best part is that the sponge soaked up the custard and when you take a bite, it just explodes out with apples. I would recommend you make this dish if you are hosting a dinner party. If you want to add spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger powder, I won't stop you. But doing it this way, without the spices, was just simply delicious as well. Well, there you have it. Classic Eve's pudding. Go and make this. You won't be disappointed. Thank you for watching. As usual, it was a pleasure having you with us on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watch, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. And we shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.